What's up, everybody? It's Justin. We're live again. Welcome to Clovis Live Weekly Ask Me Anything AMA. We call them AMA because we're cool kids and we like acronyms. So ask me anything. Number 14. We've been at this for 14 weeks now, which is crazy, crazy, crazy. I'm super excited about this one. We're talking about one of my favorite topics, making sure everything's cool. Yep, we're good. Okay, so this is live on Facebook. It, we're just live on Facebook today, right? Yep, we're live on Facebook today. And what I want you to do is I'm gonna make sure this is up. So uh, every time that we start the live videos, I just make sure that we have people coming in. So I'm gonna refresh the Clovis Culture page. You're probably watching on the Clovis Culture page. We'll probably also share this into the Clovis Academy if you're a member there. So I'm gonna bring this up, make sure that everything's working on the Clovis Culture page. Loading, loading. Yes, we're there. Okay, first things first. If you will please do me a giant favor and click the share button on this video. All you have to do is click share. You're gonna get a drop down menu, and that drop down menu is going to say share now public. Bam. All you gotta do, I just did it, so now it's shared to my timeline at Justin Nault. This is weekly. Ask me anything, number 14. Today we're talking all about kids. If you guys are in the academy or you've seen these Ask Me Anything videos live the last 13 weeks, number nine was the last time we talked about kids. We did an episode called Feeding Their Children and Their Gut Bugs. That was my favorite episode up until now. I've never been more excited about an Ask Me Anything. We have huge, 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 huge news, like stupid huge news that you have to hang out for. I'm gonna drop some crazy bombs on you. It's gonna be amazing. I have a very proud moment happening that's gonna happen later. Not right now, not right now. I have to calm down, I have to calm down. But it's coming, I promise, it's gonna be insane. I'm even more proud of this than I am of the Perfect Paleo Powder, which is literally my baby, and I have something that I'm more proud of now. So you guys are gonna learn about this. Ask me anything number four. Okay, like we did last week, um, This is we're, we're going to this kind of me and a whiteboard type deal, which I think is a little bit better because I can show you some things visually, I can t work through some things, things in my head, it's a little bit easier for me to get some stuff out, um, to keep track of what I'm talking about. Um, so it's all about kids, but like we did last week, I'm gonna give people a couple of minutes just to get this room full. The more people, the better. I put a video out in the Clovis Academy today. Um, so now that the video is live, if you wanna jump into your comments, a lot of you added people to the Clovis Academy, which is our private Facebook group. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We went over 500 members today. So if you're in the Clovis Academy, we went over 500 members. That's crazy. Over 500 members today, and we built this group in what, four weeks, something crazy like that. So we have 500 members. Um, if you try to add somebody to the group or, or didn't add them to the group and you want them to watch this and you're seeing this now, all you have to do is tag them in the comments. So the Clovis Academy is a private group. The Clovis Culture Facebook page is not private, just facebook.com slash the Clovis Culture. So if you tag your friends in the comments right now, I wanna see some people do it, start tagging. If you tag people in the comments, they're going to get a notification and it's gonna take them directly to this video so they can see it. So if you have loved ones with kids, please tune them into this. If you have loved ones that have seen you changing things a little bit with your kids and they seem, maybe they're a little bit interested in it, they wanna learn more about it, that kind of thing, then tag them in this video. We wanna get as many people as we can watching this because this is crazy, crazy important stuff. And again, I know some of you in the Clovis Academy are gonna be upset because I'm not gonna talk science today. Um, I will leave time for a live Q&A, a question and answer section at the end. We're gonna leave time for that. So if you have sciencey questions, you wanna talk about glucose and insulin, we can do that. But let's do it at the end, right? Because most of the people who see this video, they're new, they're just coming into Clovis. They don't know me, they don't know Clovis, they don't know what I'm all about. I'm not gonna hit them in the face with a bunch of crazy science. Just like last week, I'm gonna talk about here and here, here and here. But last week, we talked about you here and here. This week, we talk about the little ones here and here. Little ones all the way up to the 17 year olds. Anyone who's not an adult, right? We're gonna talk about kids, We're talking all about kids today. We're talking about adolescents, toddlers, infants, whatever, but we're talking about them here and here. Because remember, what happens to you at these very, very developmental ages, ages three to eight, that kind of thing, you carry it with you, trust me, I am living proof that you carry it with you for your entire life. So here and here, very, very important. We're gonna talk about that. Let's see how we're doing in the group here. We got a lot of viewers, okay, awesome, great. Perfect, perfect. Oh yeah, my dad's in the group. What's up, dad? How are you? <laughs> dad's in here. Okay, cool, we have a lot of live viewers now, which is awesome. Keep tagging people. Yes, the number's going up. Perfect, you guys are awesome. Uh, tag, tag, tag. Okay, how are we looking? What do you think, Josh? 
You want to wait? Go. All right, we're going to go for it. We're going to jump in. Ask me anything, number 14. If you follow us on social, you probably know what this is about. This is episode number 14, and it is called How to Set Your Kids Free in 30 Days. How to Set Your Kids Free in 30 Days. Now, first things first, I need to get something out of the way. We got to clear the air on this, okay? I am not a parent. If you don't know me, my name is Justin Nault, and I'm the founder of a company called Clovis, and I invented a line of nutritional powders called the Perfect Paleo Powder. And I am a nutritional therapist, I'm a specialist in sports nutrition, and I help people change their lives for the better. And I've done it with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. And we have a whole bunch of testimonies, and a whole bunch of pictures, and a whole bunch of videos, and a lot of people that scream from the mountaintops that Clovis is the best thing they've ever done. So keep that in mind, but let me preface this video by saying I am not a parent. I am a single 31-year-old man, okay? I have a dog. He's awesome. I take pretty good care of him, but I am not a parent, and I understand I'm not a parent. I don't know your struggle. There's no way for me to know your struggle. The closest I get to understanding your struggle is observing my brother Steve. He has four kids. So I have a bunch of nieces and nephews. It's great. I love taking care of them. I also love when, they, when I get to send them back because it, it's very stressful. It's crazy stressful. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine what it's like to get kids ready for school in the morning and get them out the door. So I want you to understand I, I'm not pretending to know your struggle. I'm not pretending to tell you how to be a parent. I'm sure you guys have way more to teach me than I have to teach you. I'm sure of that. Your experience blows any of my expertise out of the water. I promise you. And I want you to know that I understand that. So there's no way, it's impossible for me, I, no one can. I can never love your kids the way that you love your kids. There's just no way. I can't even understand what that feeling is, right? My dad tells me he has it for me all the time, which is great, like that's amazing. But I don't know that feeling, but I promise you, I care about your kids. I care about every single kid in every single family from every single parent that is watching this video right now. I promise you, I believe that your kids are the future of this country. And that's what I'm working towards because there are very serious things at stake here and we're gonna get into this and I'm gonna to explain to you just how dire this situation is and what we have to do about childhood nutrition and how important it is. But understand, I don't know your struggle, I don't pretend to know your struggle. What I do know is biochemistry. I know biochemistry, I know the science behind all this, I know how to change people's lives for the better. I know how to change the lives of kids for the better. I know how to change their health and nutrition for the better because I've done it before. That's my experience. Also, I was a fat kid growing up. <laughs> so that's where a lot of this comes from. I mean, it's not a coincidence that I'm 31 and I own a nutrition company because I carry pain with me that I've had since I was eight years old, right? Um, and I talked a lot about that last week. I shared some stories last week, so some of you already know these stories. You might hear a couple things you've already heard before, right? But I was a fat kid growing up, and that, that's where my unhealthy obsession began, was trying to come out of that. But I didn't actually learn about childhood nutrition and the full-blown importance of it until about four years ago, which is when my family had a tragedy. So my, my uh, brother and his wife had a baby who was terminally, she was born terminally ill. Um, she's, she's still with us. She's four years old. She just turned four. Savannah just turned four. But she is considered 100% disabled. Um, she was having hundreds of seizures a day when she was born. So she's 100% she's vegetative. Um, so through Savannah is how I first learned of the ketogenic diet and the ketogenic diet um, being used. Foundations like the Charlie Foundation who actually use the ketogenic diet as a therapeutic treatment for children with epileptic seizures and these, these cognitive disorders, right? So that's how I first really, really got into keto and understanding nutrition for children. And since then, it's been my obsession because once you go down that road, you see just how screwed up the nutrition world is for kids. And when you start to put the pieces together, you realize all the consequences for the country as a whole. And it's pretty nuts and it's hard to look away from. So all that I'm asking tonight is that you let me into your living room, please. Let me share with you my knowledge. There are going to be times when I get upset during this. There are going to be times where I get aggressive. There are going to be times where I have a hard time controlling my emotions because this means so much to me. So I'm asking you, please forgive me ahead of time. And please just allow me to share my knowledge with you as a nutritional therapist, as a specialist in sports nutrition, as a researcher, as a lover of biochemistry, and someone who's been through the ringer with nutrition fitness for the last 15 years. Please just let me in your living room. 
forget that I'm not a parent for like an hour. And if I slip up, please excuse me. I'm sure I'm gonna say some stuff that you don't like. I'm, I'm just telling you right now, I probably will. So please forgive me. Um, I'm actually, I, like, I'm legitimately asking your permission right now because I'm a little bit shaky about this whole topic. It makes me a little bit nervous because I've talked to a lot of moms behind the scenes. Um, the Clovis Academy is mostly mommies. We have just all these awesome mommies that are engaging and doing activity every single day. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. So I'm asking your permission. So literally, it's gonna make me feel better if one or two, one or two of you just drop me a comment right now and say, yes, please continue. Tell me that you want me to continue. Okay, Jackie says bring it. And Jackie's an awesome mom of twins. So I'm just letting Jackie speak for all of you, if that's cool. Um, I promise this is gonna be really, really cool. And I promise I'm gonna put 100% effort into making sure that you lead this Facebook Live with information that you did not have when you first got here. I can promise you that's gonna happen, okay? So, let's do this. How to set your kids free in 30 days. I'm gonna go back to my backstory. If you're in the academy and you've heard this, I apologize, but my backstory is I was a fat kid growing up. Um, it was really around age 11 that it was worse. It was the worst for me. This is where, um, I would purposefully bow out of uh, activities that other kids were doing, like swimming, things like that. I didn't want to take my shirt off. Um, older kids would call me Doughboy. I've had, had my shirt pulled over my head and my belly slapped and called Doughboy. And I've had grown-ups make fun of me. I got some grown-ups that yelled out of the window of their car at me, said, run, fat boy, run, while I was running down the street. So I was a chubby little kid, and there was a lot that came with that. And I now carry all of these painful memories and this like kind of body dysmorphia thing that you carry with you. And I'm sure there are a lot of you out there that feel the same way. Um, oddly enough, I had a great conversation with my dad about it, that he carries some of the same things and I didn't even know that, right? Uh, didn't know that till we get these videos out there. So it's, it's real tough. It's real tough being a fat kid. And I hate using the term fat kid and that's why I use bunny ears because it sucks to even say, but that's what it was. Um, so that's where my obsession started, me getting really, really unhealthy in high school with fitness and terrible nutrition and all that. We'll get into all that. Um, and obviously the tragedy of Savannah. Uh, Savannah is the name of my niece. That's my brother's daughter. And um, we live, but now I just want to let you know, we live this every day. Like my dad is amazing. He makes baby formula for, homemade baby formula for Tyler, who is my brother's youngest son. He's, he's my, my newest nephew. Tyler is awesome. So my dad makes all of their formula by hand. My brother Steve makes a lot of Tyler's formula as well. They're whizzes at it now. They just make this homemade formula. Steve and I just last week went through and updated Savannah's formula. So Savannah's on a feeding tube. And the only silver lining there is that you can actually really carefully control every ounce and micronutrient and macronutrient of everything that goes into this baby's system because you don't have to worry about the digestive process. You don't have to worry about the taste in the mouth or the texture or anything like this. She's still digested, obviously, but you're missing a large portion of that, which is actually getting her to eat, which is very, very difficult, especially with a 100% disabled child, right? Um, so a lot of these babies with the same condition that Savannah has, which is an extremely rare genetic condition, um, they end up with feeding tubes. So we're able to carefully control what goes in that feeding tube. So my brother and I sat down on Easter actually, and we just went through Excel spreadsheets and my approved foods list from Clovis. A lot of you know what that approved foods list is. And now we carefully control exactly what goes in that feeding tube, which is awesome. So anyway, I just wanted to just give you that little background information on why I am so obsessed with this. And now we have some, some people who have contacted me over the last couple of weeks who have had a lot of success within the Clovis Academy with their own personal transformation, their fat loss transformation. And they want me to help with their kids because there's a lot of overweight kids. So um, I've done a lot of work around this now. And I'm going to get to that a little bit later and explain some really, really exciting stuff that I'm working on. But I've been helping some parents with their kids. Um, so we have, we have a video, right? Okay. Here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to pull up a video so you guys can see uh, in the Clovis Academy some people share. we got some kids doing some crazy stuff. And we have uh, one, one boy that I want to show you that's had a pretty incredible transformation so far. And he's still kicking ass. So, um, yeah, can you pull that up? So it's just a video of the kids, right? Yeah, yeah, let's do the video of the kids. It's great, man. I love these. Okay, this is Amanda's daughter, and she's doing a pink Himalayan sea salt shot. So in the morning, I like to get people to take in some electrolytes, right? Get their electrolytes going in the morning. So we had this salt challenge, uh, taking a salt shot. 
That's the little girl taking the salt challenge. This is Crystal's little girl. She ate four eggs. She's two years old and ate four eggs, which is incredible. That might be the cutest kid in the world. Let's just be honest. It might legitimately be the cutest human being on planet Earth. That's amazing. So we have these Clovis kids that are in, inside of the academy and you had their parents who thought this transformation was gonna be difficult at first and now they're passing it on to their kids and they're teaching their kids new things, which is so incredible. I absolutely love it. It makes my heart melt. It's literally like I know that I found my life's work because of this. Um, do you have a picture of Bryce? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna bring up Bryce too. We'll talk more about Bryce's story as well, but this is Sean's son, Bryce. Um, 15 pounds in 10 days. 15 pounds in 10 days. If you have a son or a daughter who is overweight, think about what 15 pounds in 10 days would do for their self-confidence, right? Just think about that. It's absolutely crazy. So we're gonna get into this stuff deeper. Now, if you stay till the end, till the end, you have gotta stay till the end, okay? Because we're gonna talk more about transformations. We're gonna talk more about this new thing that I invented, literally out of thin air, invented something new. Um, you'll have everything you need to set your kids free in 30 days. We also have a very special offer for you. And if you're in the academy, you know how these offers go, that these offers are pretty ridiculous. But I need you to stick around to the end, okay? So stick around to the end. You're gonna learn about this new program, this new thing that I've invented that has not existed before today. Um, so that's it. All you gotta do is watch this video. We're gonna dive in to the nuts and bolts of this thing now. So again, my name's Justin Nault, nutritional therapist. Look at it from that perspective. Forget the non-parent thing, all right? Thank you for letting me in your living room. Thank you for letting me share this knowledge with you. So. How to set your kids free in 30 days. It sounds like a weird statement, right? How to set your kids free. Like, what are you saying, Joe? Are you saying my kid's trapped? Like, what are you saying? Sounds like I'm saying that your kid's being held hostage. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's 100% what I'm saying. Your kids are being held hostage by adults. Kids are being held hostage by their parents, by their teachers, by other parents by doctors, they're being held hostage. That's true. And I'm sorry if that upsets you. It's true, but it is not your fault. You have to understand that this is not your fault at all. It's money, okay? Billions and billions and billions of dollars have created this issue that we have with childhood obesity right now. Now the crazy thing is these billions of dollars that were spent they're all marketing dollars. And they were not targeting you. They were targeting your parents. So there are millions and millions of dollars that were targeting your parents to get you, to get your parents to buy the products they wanted you to buy, to give them to you, to instill these habits in you, this whole healthy whole grain, food pyramid nonsense, right? They spent millions of dollars to convince your parents so your parents would convince you now, there are more millions and millions of dollars. We're talking about billions now over these multiple generations. There are more millions and millions of dollars being targeted at you right now, so you will instill bad habits into your child. You are being manipulated. Understand that you're being manipulated. Now, I manufacture products. That's what I do. I know marketing. I've seen behind the scenes of manufacturing companies. I know how marketing works. They're manipulating you 100%. They are manipulating you with money. The manipulation is how things like low fat drinkable yogurt and fruit juice being in your kid's daily diet and skim milk. The only way that happens, it's so nonsensical. It goes against everything that the human body is made for. The only way that happens is marketing dollars, unregulated marketing dollars. It's a huge, huge problem. It's literally genocide. I know that's a big scary word. I'm sorry if it upsets you. Turn me off if you want to. It's genocide. That's what it is. That's what these marketing dollars are. That's what these big food companies are doing. So understand, I am not your enemy here. If I say something that upsets you, I'm not your enemy. Big food is your enemy. When I say big food, what does that mean? Kellogg's, Kraft, whatever, Dannon, their drinkable yogurt nonsense, right? Like all these giant companies that have billions of dollars in ad spend, that's your enemy. Big food is your enemy. I am not your enemy. So before we begin, I need everybody to do the same thing. We all need to admit something, okay? This is a big thing, humility. We need to understand and admit that for the last several decades, we've gotten it completely wrong. Completely wrong. 
We need to understand that. I had it wrong. My parents had it wrong, right? They absolutely did. But we need to be the type of people, growth mindset people, to look at each other right now and say, yes, yes, we screwed up 100%. We did. Let's fix it right now. What can we do to fix it before it's too late for my kids or before I have another kid or before my kid is 18 and goes out into the world by himself? We need to instill some new habits in him, okay? Him, her. So think about this for a second. On this entire planet, there are two types of animals that become overweight and obese. Whole planet, all these different species of animals, there are two types of animals that become overweight or obese. One, human beings. Two, the animals that human beings feed. Think about it. You have an obese house cat. You have a fat dog, right? That doesn't happen in nature. It doesn't happen ever. Ever, ever, ever. It's only through human intervention. Feedlot cattle, these disgusting big, big fat animals with great marbleized fat so you can serve it in a restaurant and call it awesome. A big juicy ribeye Texas steak, right? That kind of junk, right? We make these animals fat. In nature, it does not happen. We're the only animal who eats the opposite of our genetic programming, who goes against our instinct and tries to trick mother nature, tries to outsmart mother nature. We're the only animal in the animal kingdom that does this. Understand that. So what I'm trying to do is get you back to where your body wants to be naturally, get you back to where your kid's body wants to be naturally. That's all that I'm trying to do. So understand, I went out into the world and I researched the hell out of as much as I possibly could on childhood nutrition, childhood obesity, the overweight epidemic in, ch in children. I couldn't find anything, nothing. Do you know why? Because this is not natural. It has never happened ever before in the history of mankind has childhood obesity been a problem. This is of the last 30 to 40 years since the widespread adoption of the food pyramid. That's the government, okay? They push this food pyramid in all these public school systems. Now we're seeing the decades start to, it's literally like compounding interest on the food pyramid. That's what it is. It gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. What are we looking at now, okay? 18.5% of all American children are obese. Think about that number. 18.5% of all American children are obese. Now I want to point out something very, very important. That doesn't include overweight kids. It doesn't include overweight kids. We're talking obese. Do you know what obese means? The word obese means at least 30 pounds overweight. So 18.5% of kids are at least 30 pounds overweight. When you think about it, most little kids should be like, I don't know, 40, 50 pounds. They're 30 pounds overweight, 30 pounds overweight. If you get to 40 plus pounds overweight, that term is now morbidly obese, which means you're at a very, very high risk of death. So metabolic diseases start creeping in and all this crazy, terrible stuff you don't wanna talk about. So 18.5% of American children are obese. One out of every five Caucasian American children will be type two diabetic by age 12. One out of every five Caucasian American children will be type two diabetic by age 12, right? And I think that statistics from like 2012, 2013. It's probably worse than that now. On top of that, African American children, you're now talking one out of every two. 50% of all African American children will be type 2 diabetic by age 12. This is crazy. This has never happened in the history of our species, ever, 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 ever. This is a new phenomenon. And all of a sudden, well, how did this happen? What's happening? We've had the food pyramid for 30, 40 years. This is not a mystery. It's not a mystery, but the government refuses to change and big food up here lobbying, spitting dollars down at all of your candidates to make sure nothing changes like this, puppet masters, right? I wouldn't be surprised if I get a death threat after this video, I'm not even kidding. So that's what's happening. Understand that. So one out of every two African American kids will be type two diabetic by age 12. Now at this rate, in 12 short years, if we keep going down this road, 12 years from now, 100% of America's GDP, 100% of America's GDP will be spent on caring for the sick. Now almost 100% of those sick people are suffering, suffering from metabolic disease. That means literally exactly what you think it means. Diseases associated with human metabolism. 
So it means that things are going wrong. Things are going haywire, they're going crazy. Type two diabetes, fibromyalgia, IBS, Crohn's disease, Alzheimer's, dementia, ADHD, and even cancer, all directly linked to the metabolism, metabolic diseases. These are metabolic diseases. So what happens when 100% of your GDP is spent on caring for the sick? What does that mean? It means the country collapses overnight. Just like that. 100% of all government funded programs go away. Boom. No choice. Nobody has any say in the matter. All the money goes away. All the government funded programs go away. We have riots in the street like happened in Greece several years back. That's what we're looking at. This is the importance of this. We're literally talking about saving the entire country. So I want you to understand that children mimic parents. Children mimic parents and other adults. So this doesn't just fall on the, the, the shoulders of the parents. You learn how your child should eat from other parents, from your loved ones, from your parents. You know, grandma's got this amazing pasta sauce recipe, right? And doctors and all these people that are constantly telling you, people like me, constantly telling you what your kid should be eating, right? Um, it gets tricky, right? <laughs> because we know that there's an obesity epidemic. Over one third of the country for adults, over one third of adults are obese. Over one third. And again, that does not include overweight. We're just talking obese, at least 30 pounds or more overweight. It's 33% of the entire country, right? That's crazy. It's like 100 million people that are obese. And little kids mimic parents. So that's how all this is happening. We had these crazy government programs like Play 60. You always see it on NFL. If you watch NFL on Sunday, right? Play 60, play 60, and they show you know, Odell Beckham throwing a pass to some kid and he's on a football field, he's running. Get outside and play for 60 minutes. We're gonna combat obesity by getting kids outside to play. Well, if you know, my last video was lose weight by eating more and exercising less. The same goes for children. Children, don't think of them as children. They're little tiny humans. They're humans. They have the same needs and all the same things that you do. So if exercise doesn't work for you and the adult obesity epidemic, why is it gonna work for kids? Now the problem is we have campaigns like Play 60. You send your kid outside to play for 60 minutes, then he comes in, you hand him a Capri Sun and a Lunchable. Here you go. Great job going outside and playing for 60 minutes. Here's your sugar and here's your side of sugar. There you go. Better go outside and play for another six hours to burn off that sugar. Burn off that sugar, which you can't actually do. Nonsense, okay? So that's the thing. We have, we're giving them Capri Suns and Lunchable when they come in. At school, there's multiple snack times during the day. You have snack time, you have lunch time, snack time again. You have to do snacks because you're constantly spiking and crashing these kids' glu blood glucose levels. So they high energy, low energy, high energy, low energy. It's like you're trying to keep them alive. By, it's like you're giving them an adrenaline shot with a granola bar every two hours. Right? So you're spiking these kids' blood sugar. On top of that, we tell them that they need a bedtime. We have these kids' routines. Put your pajamas on. We're going to read your story. You have a routine. But then mommy and daddy stay up till 1 a.m. drinking wine. And the kids see this. Right? So there, it's mixed signals. Then we tell them at a certain time there's no more screens. You can't have any more screens. You've got to turn the screens off. But the rest of the day, when they're annoying us, we put them in front of a screen to distract them. Here. Okay. Look. Mommy's on the phone. Here's your iPad. Go. So they, they're staring at this blue light all day long. It's suppressing their melatonin levels. So they have no chance of being tired at the end of the day. It's like you, you cut off screen time 10 minutes before bed. Now you better go to sleep. If you don't go to sleep, I'm going to be mad at you. They can't. They can't. Their melatonin levels have been suppressed to daytime levels. They're not, they're not just trying to be a jerk for no reason. It's literally we're programming them this way. It's constant mixed signals. Some days they're allowed treats. Special occasion, you get a treat. Some days we're going to tell you that you have to finish your plate of broccoli. Other days, we're gonna come home with pizza because we don't feel like cooking. It's constant mixed signals. Mixed signals, mixed signals, mixed signals. Now, I want to teach you how to change the mixed signals. If you're in the Clovis Academy, if you've seen transformations in yourself, transformation in your husband, your wife, your friends, you might be new, you might be three to four or five days in, you're still going through your detox saying, this Justin guy's crazy, I'm dying from no sugar, right? You might be going through that right now. I'm gonna teach you how to undo all this. And I want to remind you that this is not your fault. It is not your fault, I'm telling you. And when you see me get animated, you see me get upset, just picture that the other side of this face that I have right now is the CEO of Kraft. It's the CEO of Kellogg. It's the CEO of Dannon. It's all these people who are pulling the wool over your eyes and spending their money, spending billions of dollars to make sure that your kids stay sick. 
That's who I'm talking to. When I start doing this, I'm a fighter. I don't know how to not be a fighter, okay? When I start doing this, that's who I'm talking to. I love all you guys and I care about your kids. This is super important. I'm gonna get animated. I promise I'm gonna get animated. Okay, so let's check some comments and see where we're at, see if I lost anybody yet. I need a salt shot. <laughs> yeah, Lori, I'm sure that's the thing is it's, it's, there's a lot of people talking about kids now that I've seen these changes happen. Kids today are different. Kids today are different. In my day, my kids were this. There's a great quote from a basketball coach, I can't remember who it is, but he's like, we keep blaming the kids. The kids aren't different. It's the adults giving them bad information that's different. And it's compounding, like I said. It's just that we, we are doing what the rest of society is doing. You're feeding them the same way, teaching them the same things. Um, Josh, is there a reason why I can't see all the comments on this? You may just have to make it full screen. Okay. Like expand the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, here we go. I'll full screen it. There we go. Oh, way better. Okay, awesome. I got all these comments now. Guys, I can see your comments. Yes, there is. Sam, you're absolutely right. There's not enough research on it. But remember, there's not enough research on it because it's never been a thing. This is so new. We don't know what this is. This childhood obesity epidemic, we're all throwing our hands up going, we don't know what to do. How did we get here? We need to reverse it before it gets worse because it's only going to get worse generation upon generation upon generation. So, oh, wow, there's way more comments. Okay, awesome. My nine-year-old said, yeah, I'll keep watching this. He has a logical explanation. Amanda's kid, I promise I have a logical explanation. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. I'm going to talk to you guys too. Okay, so let's take a look back. We're going to talk about beliefs. Beliefs are super powerful. Beliefs run the show. Particularly in this country, beliefs run the show. And people don't even know why they believe the things they believe. But parents, I'm talking to you right now because I'm going to try to squash some of the fear here. We have a joke in the Clovis Academy about kid dictators Kids run in the house, kids pick what goes in the cupboards, kids pick what goes in the fridge. I get that and I'm always super sensitive about it. I understand. I may be less sensitive tonight. Mm, sorry. <laughs> so belief number one. All right, now what we're talking about is if you guys hand over trust to me and I help you help your kids. I help you help yourself. I help you help your kids. You follow a Clovis protocol. You do the things that I tell you to do to transform the health of your family and your household. So the beliefs are that doing this is going to lead to certain consequences. Belief number one, I'm going to lose trust with my kids. Trust is a very important word. I'm going to lose trust with my kids. Now, up to this AMA, I spoke with a bunch of parents about this to make sure that I'm getting this right. And there is some immense fear among parents with this trust issue. Now, what that is, is how many of you think that your kids think of you as superheroes? Right? I remember being a little kid and my dad would throw a baseball, right? He would throw a baseball up, boom, and throw it up as far as he could. And my brother and I would grab our gloves and we'd wait. I'd wait for 15 minutes for that ball to come down because my dad threw that ball to the moon. I had never seen a ball go that far in my entire life, right? Dad, I think you're watching right now. But literally, I remember being on Twin Lakes Ave and you'd throw that ball up. And I thought that that ball went to God and God threw it back. That's literally what I thought. You think your parents are superheroes. Now, you want to stay a super, superhero as long as you can. Your child's truth comes from you. Christian parents tend to raise Christian kids. Atheist parents tend to raise atheist kids. Conservative parents tend to raise conservative kids. Obese parents tend to raise obese children. And what do we call it when they do that? We call it genetic. Oh, my mom had cancer. I'm going to get cancer. No. 97% of all disease is preventable through lifestyle change. Oh. Okay, see this. 97% of all disease is 100% preventable through lifestyle intervention. 97% of all genes, disease. That means only 3% of all disease is genetic. Now what has genetic become? The word genetic has become a catch-all excuse. I'm going to have big hips because my mom had big hips. I'm going to get cancer because my mom had cancer. I'm going to become a type 2 diabetic because my mom is a type 2 diabetic. No. Only 3% of all disease is genetic. 3%. Think about that for a second. When we talk about the 100% of the GDP going to these illnesses that are metabolic, this is what we're talking about. 
Fix the metabolic. Fix it. But here's the issue. Your child's truth comes from you. So you get afraid. Up until now, Amanda, she has a nine-year-old, right? Up until now, you've been giving your nine-year-old certain foods that you thought were okay, you didn't know better, right? So these habits have been built. It's your truth. The concern is that you have been adamantly teaching them one way to do things. You can have orange juice for breakfast. You can have cereal and milk for breakfast. You can have fruit, right? You've taught them these things and you've taught them that they're good for them because you didn't know better. Now again, it's not your fault, but this is what you've been taught. So the, the fear becomes, if I listen to this Justin guy and I try to change my whole household, my kid's just gonna look at me and go, what are you talking about? You've been poisoning me for nine years? Really? And you're afraid you're gonna lose that superhero thing. You don't have all the answers, right? That sucks. The number one example I'll give you is fruit. Because I still get pushed back about this in the academy. I still get pushed back in my email, my Facebook messages, direct messages on Instagram. Everybody wants to fight me on fruit. Fruit has to be good for kids. It has to be. What you're saying is you're begging. You're not making a statement that it, it, it has to be good for kids. Because I understand the biochemistry. That's not what you're saying. You're saying it has to be good for them because I've been telling them for eight years it's good for them. What the hell? I need to save face, dude. I got to go tell my kid that I've been feeding them incorrectly for nine years. I got to tell them that. It's fear. That's what you're feeling is fear, right? Fear right here. That's the biggest thing is fear. You're afraid to tell your kid you were wrong. Why? What's the number one question you get as a parent? Why? Why? Got to eat your vegetables. Why? Got to go to bed. Why? Can't play computer games for more than an hour. Why? You got to listen to your babysitter. Why? The question you get is why? The answer can never be because I said so. It can't be because I said so. Because what are you doing when you say because I said so? You're not respecting your kid. You're hiding. You're hiding from the fact that you don't know the answer to a question. So saying, I, saying because I said so is the same thing as saying I don't really know, but that's the way it is. You see what I'm saying? So that's the thing. The kids get their truth from you. So you have a fear that they're not going to trust you anymore. But what's the quickest way to earn trust, right? We're afraid of being exposed. The quickest way to earn trust is to expose your flaws yourself. What do we teach kids? When you have a question, when you have a question, raise your hand, right? Raise your hand. So I'm just asking you guys as parents, raise your hand. Say you don't really know. Say you got it wrong. Sit down and have a conversation with them. Okay? So I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example, right? When I was a kid, we were very, very, very active, my brother and I. I played hockey for 10 years, and my brother played hockey for 10 years as well. When we weren't playing hockey, we played baseball. So when it wasn't wintertime, we played baseball. Now, my dad didn't know any better. He just thought that we needed energy. My dad was my coach. He's my coach for all my little league baseball games, hockey games, everything, right? So what he would do is he would take my brother and I to Dunkin' Donuts before games and practices. I remember this, sitting in the back of a van, we would get chocolate frosted donuts and Nesquik chocolate milk. Sugar on sugar on sugar on sugar on sugar because of the food pyramid. Kids get their energy from grains and sugar and blah, 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 and God forbid you give them fat. So we needed sugar to get through these games, according to dad, right? So what happens is we're playing hockey. I played hockey for 10 years and I still turned into a fat kid. I was super, super active. Dad didn't know any better, so I end up turning into a fat kid. And now, I don't like my body. I'm getting teased. I don't want to take my shirt off. I'm having this horrible time as a little kid, counting down the days till I can lift weights. Dad wouldn't let us lift weights till I was 15. So I turn 15, I start lifting weights. Now, my dad and my mom never spoke to me about nutrition. They never spoke to me about nutrition because they didn't know about nutrition. My dad didn't know about nutrition until three years ago when he started listening to me when the, the roles reversed because my dad's a really humble guy. Um, so that's the thing. They didn't know. They didn't know to talk to me about nutrition. So I'm going to tell you what happens. I'm going to tell you some really crazy stories. I'll tell you a story about me. Once I start lifting weights and my parents don't talk to me about nutrition, now I got to figure it out on my own. Okay? They didn't treat me like a little grown up and have a sit down conversation with me about nutrition, but they didn't know. They didn't know in fairness. So what happens? I become addicted to lifting weights. I become addicted to the treadmill. I start experimenting. My, parent, my parents don't even know, Dad, you probably don't even know this. <laughs> um, I start taking whey protein. 
I start taking whey protein during the day. I start taking a special slow release whey protein at night. I always worked. I always had a job, so I had money. And I started buying creatine. I started buying things like dextrose. I started supplementing sugar post-workouts to try to get bigger muscles because Muscle and Fitness Magazine said to do it. Then came the dangerous stuff. Uh, Hydroxycut. I remember having a subscription to Hydroxycut. So I was taking diet pills. Um, I was taking ephedrine, which is now illegal. It's banned. Uh, the original iteration of Hydroxycut actually had ephedrine in it. So that got stripped off the shelves and they came back with an ephedrine-free version. So I was taking ephedrine and I was taking straight up caffeine pills. A lot of caffeine pills. I'm telling you. Why? Just because I had some pudge. Had a little bit of pudge, right? By high school, I wasn't a fat kid anymore. By high school, I was playing gigs. I was getting attention from girls. I was on the news. This crazy local musician, right? But I still had pudge. Could not get rid of the pudge. I couldn't look like the people in the magazines. and Nobody ever told me how to. So I just kept exercising, 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 and putting all sorts of chemicals in my body. I don't even know what I did to my body. I don't know what kind of long-term stuff I'm dealing with. But I didn't know. I didn't know. And I carry that body dysmorphia with me all the way to 31. I don't like having a shirt off now. I told you that before. There are videos of me floating around online with no shirt on. Last week we did cryo and I was on Instagram with no shirt on. Hated it. Hated it. Hated it. Every second of it. You won't see it on my face that I hate it because I understand this is my position now. I am the guy from Clovis. I get it. And I also understand that I have muscles. I get it. But my brain, I don't see it. I don't see it the same way you guys do, right? I'm always gonna see a chubby little 11 year old kid at 31 years old, that's what I'm gonna see. I go, look at that guy in the picture. That guy has pecs and biceps, but it doesn't connect with my brain that it's me. It's literally a different person because I didn't learn this stuff. I had to figure my way through it. But dad and mom didn't know better, right? So now fast forward, my dad is an absolute savage because for the last three years, he's listened to me. We've revamped his entire diet. He went to a low carb paleo diet. He lifts weights with me. He's now 59 years old with biceps, abs, and he can deadlift over 300 pounds. He's a monster. He's barely the same species as most 59 year olds. Like it's ridiculous. You should see him with a chain around his waist and a 45 pound plate doing pull-ups. It's ridiculous, right? Because he listened to me and he learned. Now, if you talk to my dad, he will be the first person to say, I got this very wrong. I used to make Justin cinnamon sugar toast on white bread for breakfast when I got him out of bed for school in the morning. Right? He'll be the first one to tell you that he got it wrong. But you have to be willing to do that. So that takes me to one of my favorite quotes of all time, which is learn, unlearn, and relearn. Learn, unlearn, relearn. We post this on Instagram all the time. It's one of my favorite quotes of all time. Learn, unlearn, relearn. You learn something, that's great. When new science comes out and you have clear cut evidence that is irrefutable, you change your mind. And then you relearn. Unlearn the stuff that was incorrect and relearn. If, so, if you talk to somebody from five years ago, I've been making nutrition plans for people for five years now. Think about that, it's crazy. When you go talk to someone that I made a plan for five years ago, I gave them all a cheat day. A cheat day and I said, go crazy, drink beer, drink Carvel ice cream cake, eat, get a blooming onion from Ruby Tuesdays because that's what my personal trainer at the time taught me to do, right? I didn't know any better. So now you can't come back five years later and say, well, dude, you gave me a plan five years ago and you told me cheat days and now you don't even suggest a cheat meal. This is crazy. I can't trust you. No, I'm humbly telling you I didn't have information back then. I hadn't studied biochemistry. I didn't know anything about biochemistry then. I didn't know the damage of cheat days. Now I know I have some new evidence and my evidence is clear cut. You have proof of it in the transformations that I make happen. So I know what I'm doing now. You get to learn from my experience. You don't have to guess, but learn, unlearn, relearn is very, very important because this superhero mentality that we have as parents is very, very dangerous. It's the same thing as people say, never meet your idols, right? Never meet your idols because they say you're going to be let down because your idols are usually a celebrity. You don't see the ins and outs. It's a little different now for our, uh, our, our, the generation under me, like millennials and younger. We get to see our celebrities. We get to see them on Instagram when they have meltdowns, crazy Kanye West stuff, all that. Kind of. We get to see some behind the scenes stuff. But generally speaking, it's like these celebrities, you don't want to meet them because you're going to be let down because their flaws are exposed, right? That's what parents are afraid of. They don't want their flaws exposed. You know, I don't want to, uh, uh, so I was talking to one of the moms in the group. I'm not going to throw the name out there. Uh, but she said, you don't know what it's like. You're, you're sitting here telling me that sugar, that kids are trying to, that people are trying to poison my kids with sugar. They're trying to poison my kids, poison my kids, poison my kids. You don't know what it's like to wake up and look in the mirror and look at yourself and say, I'm the one poisoning my kid. That's what she said to me. It breaks my heart, man. I get it. I get it. But you didn't have the information. You can't beat yourself up for that. 
Now you have the information. You have the information so you have a moral obligation at this point to do better for these kids. That's what it is. It's a moral obligation. Once you know, once you know the truth about sugar and carbohydrates and all these things, you have a moral obligation at that point. Help your kids out, but you need to sit down with them like little grown-ups and you need to talk to them about it. So let me give you a testimony. We're going to bring, uh, we'll bring a picture up for you too. Yeah, let's, do we have that picture? Uh, Bryce. There's Bryce. All right, so I want to explain something to you. Uh, Sean came to me. Sean and her husband have had incredible transformations. Um, all their clothes are fitting different. They've lost a couple pounds. Sean likes to comment about how she's lost a whole bunch of inches but not a whole bunch of pounds, and she has to get it out of her head to get on the scale, right? We always talk about the scale. Um, so she has Bryce on board, and she gave me permission to share this, this picture and everything and tell you Bryce's story. So Bryce is now down 15 pounds in 10 days. 15 pounds in 10 days. Think about that, okay? Now, and look at that picture, right? This 15 pounds in 10 days, do you know what this is going to do? Do you think that Bryce doesn't trust his mom? That he's going he's gonna to have less trust in his mom after this? Think about that for a second, right? So I know that Sean herself has experimented with different diets and all these different things, the whole roller coaster thing that everybody's had their whole life. So trust me, Bryce is seeing the roller coaster. He's seeing mommy try different things, this roller coaster and everything, and I'm sure mommy's been pretty adamant that one way of doing things is the right way at different times. Right? And then maybe changed her mind. So I want you to think about it. Mom has introduced Bryce to the Clovis Protocol. Justin didn't. I didn't introduce Bryce to anything. Bryce doesn't know me. Bryce isn't in the Clovis Academy. So now mom has introduced a new way of life to Bryce that has changed his life for the better. He's lost 15 pounds in 10 days and he's super excited to get fitted for his tux for prom. He has prom coming up. She said he's crazy excited and it brings tears to her eyes because of how excited he is for this prom. Because he feels good about himself. Feels good about his body, right? Do you think that he's going to turn around and not trust mom? Or do you think he's going to trust mom more, right? He's going to say, mom admitted that she got this wrong and she taught me how to fix it. And she sat down and she talked to me about it. She introduced me to a whole new way of thinking a whole new way of eating. She helped me set up an app. She helped me track. And I lost 15 pounds in 10 days. And now I'm super excited. I feel good about myself. Are you kidding me? I mean, these are like lifelong memories that are never going to go away. You're getting closer to your kid. Do not worry about losing your kid's trust. If I looked back now, like my dad allowing me to transform his health, I trust him so much. That's the kind of role model I want. Someone who will raise their hand and humbly admit, I got this wrong. Can you show me a different way? Raise your hand. That's what dad did. Dad said, man, Justin, you've gone deep with this research stuff and your body's changing and you seem really healthy and you seem super happy and I think I wanna learn about this. That's a role model that I get. You know, that's my role model, raising his hand, saying, Justin, I'm really sorry I got this wrong. Dad will probably tell you right now in the comments he got it wrong. He remembers cinnamon sugar toast that he made for me. He remember having pancake eating contests with all my cousins. Right? I held the household record. I ate 13 pancakes in one sitting. I'm not kidding. That's a real thing. He'll tell you about it. So he knows he was wrong. Now, when dad comes back to me and lets me transform his life and says, yeah, son, let's do this together. I have memories with my dad that most people will never have with their dads because we get to work out together. We get to exercise together. <laughs> There's dad doing ARX. <laughs> That's great. There's my 59-year-old dad. That's about a 2,000-pound leg press, by the way. He's an absolute monster. Um, so we have all these great experiences together that we wouldn't have had. And I trust him more than I've ever trusted him before. That's a fantastic role model. Someone who puts their hand up and says, I got it wrong, and then sits me down and says, let's talk about this. Now, what would it be like if here I am at 31 years old, and I'm healthier than I've ever been, I'm happier than I've ever been, and I talk to my dad about it, and he goes, you got lucky. I had it right. I did the best I could for you kids. I did everything in my power to make sure you were healthy, and I stand by that decision. You needed that toast. You needed that donut before hockey. Blah, 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 blah. My trust for dad would go out the window. Instead, I want that role model who stands up and admits when they were wrong. I debated talking about this. Literally debated talking about this because parents get real, real, real sensitive with me really, really quick if I even hint that they've done something incorrectly. But I'm telling you, it's not your fault. So you have to get past that whole, we've done something wrong, stand up and raise your hand and say, okay, dude, there's an obesity epidemic among little kids and I want to help. 
I want to help. I don't want my kid to be a statistic. I don't want my family to be a statistic. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I'm right here. I'm right here. Justin at ClovisCulture.com. Raise your hand. I got you. I'll talk to your kid. Whatever you need. Okay? Let's fix this together. Your kid will trust you more. I promise. But it can't be a dictatorship. It can't be, well, mommy, last week I could have fruit and this week I can't. Yup, that's just the way it is. Sit down and eat it or go to your room. Those days are behind you. Okay? We can work on this together. Let's take a break, look at some comments. So that's belief number one is that I will lose trust with my kids. How many moms are with me? Dad is awesome, yeah. You go, Dad. Oh, Dad, don't be ashamed. You're silly. See, there's my dad. <laughs> No, paleo pancakes? No, when we were kids, we did not do paleo pancakes. They were 100% flour pancakes cooked in Crisco, hydrogenated industrial seed oils. Disgusting, right? About as bad as it gets. Literally as bad as it gets. Uh, Bryce is doing awesome. Great. Amanda, this is awesome. Yeah, Anna, incredible way to build trust with your kids. Bryce is my hero too, Crystal. So is your little girl for eating four eggs. That's crazy. I ate four eggs today. <laughs> it's hilarious. Awesome. My kids all know you. Cool. I want to know your kids. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I always say mommy. I still call my, I call my mom mama. Mama. This is awesome. Great. Lori, we can't change the past, but we can change the future. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. That's so huge. We can't change the past, but we can change the future. That's what we're working towards together. And I promise I'll help you in any way I can. I have a one-year-old and two-year-old starting them young. Awesome. You have a much easier road ahead of you. Now, I say you have a much easier road, but Jackie would disagree with me because Jackie knows she went through some stuff with her little twins. But her little twins are drinking Digest and Rest Paleo Powder, and that's amazing. Amazing. A friend that I've had for over 10 years, I invent a product and her little kids drink it. Heart explosion. I'm lucky I don't die right now with that amount of happiness in my heart. It's ridiculous. Four kiddos, four kiddos. I've been so guilty as a teacher. Tiffany, yes, we've talked about this. The parents and such crap, snack and lunch. I can't control it. I know. It's got to be tough. Tiff, we've talked about that a lot. Mama four, Lynette, awesome. Yeah, Lynette's been really active in the academy too. We're really happy to have you. Four-year-old stole paleo powder and loved it. Awesome. My dad gives it my, my nephew. We do paleo powder uh, as a, instead of fun dip. Get a spoon, licks it, dips it in the paleo powder, eats the powder. All right, cool. So let's, uh, I want to keep doing comments. This is great. I got to get out of comments for a second. Okay, we're going to get into number two. Belief number two. If I do this Clovis protocol, yeah, okay, let's see. Here, we're going to write number one, first of all. Just so you guys have this, right? Can you see this up here, Josh? Okay, so number one. From there to your right. From there to my right. Okay, number one is I will lose trust. Okay. Do we have any other markers? I don't know if we're going to give you credit. We'll see. Give me this red one. We already did this, right? Okay. I will lose trust. Handled. That's belief number one. That's not true. You're going to gain trust with your kids. If you do this correctly, you will gain trust. Number two, this is a big one. Don't get sad yet. It's only going to get worse from here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want my kid to be different. I don't want my kid to be different. That's huge. Again. Before I do these kinds of episodes, I talk to as many parents as I can. And I know this to be true. I talk to my own brother about it. I don't want my kid to be different. What does that mean? I don't want my kid to be different. I don't want him to not eat the same thing as the other kids eat. I don't want him to not believe the same things the other kids believe. I don't want him to be the weird kid with kale chips in his lunchbox. I don't, God forbid. Right? I don't want that. So here's what I have to say to you. If you are an overweight parent, you have an overweight kid, and you don't want your kid to be different, newsflash, your kid already is. Your kid is already different. Trust me, I've been, ask me how I know. Ask me how I know how different you feel when you're an overweight kid. How different you feel. Because it's tremendous. 
If you don't want your kid to be different and they're overweight, they already are different. Now, if you're an overweight parent, I want you to think about something. Take a second, think about all the times in your life when you feel intimidated. Think about all the times in your life when you don't feel a whole lot of self-worth, you don't feel good enough. Think about the times you feel afraid. Think about social settings that you don't like to be a part of because you're overweight and you know it. You don't like what you see in the mirror. Think about that if you're overweight. Now, if you have an overweight kid, understand that they are feeling all those same things that you're feeling, but they're feeling it times 50 because they don't know why it's happening. They don't have self-awareness. They don't know why they're feeling these things. Emotions are so difficult. Think about when you're a kid going through puberty. What the hell? What's happening to my body? This is crazy. I don't even understand this, right? They don't have the life experience that you have. They haven't read self-help books. They haven't met a Justin. They haven't listened to Zig Ziglar and Tony Robbins, right? They don't know these things. They're just dealing with all these intense emotions. And what are they feeling? What are they feeling, right? Different, what does different equate to, right? Different means alone. That's the fear. We talked about this last week. Alone is at the root of everything. We want to belong to a tribe. We're genetically coded to belong to the tribe and make everybody happy so we can continue to belong to the tribe. Right? That's what this is. Different means alone. You don't want your kid to be different. You think it will isolate them, but it won't. This is short-term thinking versus long-term thinking. What I mean by short-term thinking versus long-term thinking is my number one excuse from parents. You're going to love this because... If you're someone who's said it to me, you're going to go, uh-oh, that's me, guilty, right? And you've never thought about it like this. I tell people, clear all the junk out of your household, get your kids off sugar, get your kids off carbs, get them off fruit, get them off fruit juice, get them off dairy, all that nonsense junk that doesn't belong in their body, get it out of the house, get them off of it, change their habits. They say the same thing every time. But what about Christmas? What about Halloween? What about when we go to a birthday party and my kid's the only one not eating cake and they're going to think he's weird because he's not eating cake. Okay, listen. If you go to 50 birthday parties a year, 50, if you go to 50 birthday parties a year, you still have 315 days that you can feed your kid perfectly. If you feed your kid perfectly for 315 days, you can give him a piece of cake. I'm giving you permission to give him a piece of cake 50 times throughout the year at all these birthday parties you go to because you are a socialite. I don't want to trade places with you at all. I would hate to go to 50 birthday parties a year, right? Think about it. 315 days a year you can feed your kid perfectly. And then you go to Christmas. I don't care. If you're feeding him perfect the rest of the time, let grandma give him apple pie. Let grandma give him Hershey's Kisses or whatever else. And then he's going to feel like crap and go, Mom, why do I feel like this? And you get to go, you feel like that because you ate poison, Junior. That's why. And then they get to understand. They learn. Don't talk to me about Halloween and Christmas and birthdays. Don't talk to me about that. What are you talking about? It's such a tiny little percentage of their life. It's insane. So what you're doing is you're grasping at straws so you don't have to do this. I don't want to do it. I don't want to get rid of the sugar. They're going to hate me. I'm going to clean out the refrigerator and they're going to hate me. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. What about Halloween? And I'm sitting here going, you don't know how you just sounded. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. It's this short term mentality. So what's the truth here? You're saying... I don't want my kid to be the weird one that doesn't eat cake. That's what you're saying. Out loud, what are you saying here and here? If you look at me and say, I don't want my kid to be the weird one that doesn't eat cake, let's think about here and here. What are you really saying? I don't want other adults to judge me. That's what you're saying. Can we all just be honest about that? We're all afraid of judgment, right? We are very afraid of judgment, all of us. It's in our, it's, we're genetically programmed to be afraid of judgment because judgment is bad in the tribe of 150 people who live in tents and share the bison that they killed, right? That's, evolu that's, that's literally where we come from, our ancestors, the Paleolithic era. We're supposed to want to be part of the tribe. We're, we want to belong. We don't want to make waves. So you don't want your kid to be the one that doesn't eat cake because you don't want other parents to point out that you're depriving your kid. You're depriving your kid by not giving him cake. Give him cake, dude. Just make sure you don't have cake in your house at home. Then it's something special. Sugar is no longer a special treat when you have sugar every three hours for 365 days a year. You're worried about other parents. You're worried about teachers. You're worried about other parents. You're worried about opinions, right? I don't want to send my kid to school with an avocado, a shaker bottle with paleo powder, and macadamia nuts because I don't want some teacher to tell me that I'm giving him, oh, don't you think that's a lot of fat? 
Don't you think that's a lot of fat for Junior? What are you talking about? This woman doesn't know biochemistry. She's a teacher. Her specialty is not nutrition. It's like doctors. I love teachers. I respect teachers. I love doctors and respect doctors. That's not their expertise. They don't study nutrition. It's like asking a boxer how to throw a leg kick, right? I'm sorry if you're not fighters. That's a term that I use, but it's like asking a boxer how to throw a leg kick when you ask a boxer about, I mean, a, a doctor about nutrition. It's crazy. Don't ask a teacher about nutrition. Don't ask a doctor about nutrition. I'm a dueling piano player. Don't ask me how to be a professional bass player, right? Different things. So remember that you're not afraid of your kid being different. You're afraid of you being different and being called out on it. You don't want other parents to judge you. You're very, very afraid of judgment. Everybody is. Now think about it. There's a great movie. Watch uh, Captain Fantastic. We were the whole Clovis scene. We were talking about Captain Fantastic. Great movie. Go watch it right now. It's amazing. This dude raises his kids in the woods, teaches them how to hunt and fish and climb and rock climb. They live in a tent and he teaches them all about American history. They, they're, they're homeschooled. So they're, they end up way smarter than all the other kids. But then there's these scenes where they end up in civilization at dinner parties with family and it's super awkward. Hey guys, do I have audio? All right, I have audio, we're back. Okay, so really though, think about it and be honest with yourself. There's a big thing about Clovis, big, big thing about Clovis. Honesty, humility, right? Be honest with yourself. You're worried about other parents' judgments. Just check in, guys, are we good? All right, we're all good. Cool, so I'm gonna tell you a story about this, right? It's like number one, trust. We already handled trust. So what's more important, being a superhero who's never wrong, is always correct, and is never to be questioned, or to be a good role model? To be a good role model, right? Absolutely. That's the correct answer, is to be a role model. Okay? If you don't agree with that, we probably couldn't be friends in real life. That'd be real mean to you. Uh, but anyway, number two, is it more important to prioritize other people's opinions of your parenting, or to prioritize your child's health? Which one's more important? Duh, your child's health, right? So I'm gonna tell you a story. Uh, I don't know if my mom's in this room. Guys, I'm, I'm probably about to get in trouble in family politics, but um, anyway, so my mom's gonna hate that I tell this story, but sorry, mom, I love you, I love you. Let's talk about judgment. My mom does not handle judgment well, okay? Takes things very, very personally. Very personally, we've talked about it. She, wouldn't, she would not have a problem with me telling you that she takes things personally. It's true, a lot of moms do. So mom and judgment. When I'm your son, when I am your son, you're gonna get a boatload of judgment thrown at you. A boatload of judgment. Why? Because when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a stand-up comedian. I was obsessed with Jim Carrey, he's my idol. I had to be the center of attention all the time. Always performing, center of attention. I wanna be a professional hockey player. I wanna be a stand-up comedian. By the time I was like 13 years old, I had a backyard wrestling league. I built a ring in my backyard, had cameras, filmed it, produced my first TV show, and had a weekly TV show on public access. Kids would come over and we set up benches, so we had a live audience to watch us wrestle. Then we had a TV show every week that we would play and kids from school would watch it. They knew our names, they knew our entrance music and everything, right? Then, by the time I'm 16, I'm a professional musician. I'm getting paid 150 bucks as a high school kid, 150 bucks an hour to play piano. Then I go to Berkeley, now I'm in my 20s, now I'm on reality TV. I got an album out, I run a YouTube channel, I'm on reality TV, now I'm 31 and I have Clovis. Trust me, my poor parents have had to deal with a lot of judgment. Because I'm a big, big dreamer. I do things big. I don't know how to do anything besides big, right? And people have judgment on that. And family has judgment on that. 
Family can be the biggest source of judgment. They really, really can, and I've seen it. I'm not bothered by it, but I see my mom get bothered by it. So I'll give you an example. When I was a little kid, and I had to be the center of attention. Had to be the center of attention. There were friends over, mom had friends over, I'm gonna run in wearing a freaking dress. I don't care what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do something, and woo, right? I'm gonna get center of attention. So my mom's own sister used to always say to her, you know, he's a middle child, and he really needs a lot of attention, and I think he has issues. Word for word, I think he has issues. So think about that. What is she saying? She's not judging a little kid. She's judging the mom. And she's doing it on purpose. She's doing it to be hurtful. This is what other grown-ups do. Other grown-ups, a lot of grown-ups are in a lot of pain. They're not happy with decisions that they make and they project that on other people. So that's the thing. She tells my mom, your little guy, he has middle child syndrome and he has issues. My mom's devastated. She lost sleep over that. My mom used to tell me that story 10 years later. Done. You know, and I'd go, yeah, you know what? I did. I had a lot of issues. I didn't tell you about the issues, right? Now here I am. I, I still like to be the center of attention. I'm a professional entertainer. That's what I've done for the last 15 years, right? But that judgment always crushed my mom. And today, do you think the judgment has stopped? Not even close. When Clovis happened, I start doing these transformations. These same family members are going to my mom and going, how dare he start a nutrition company? What credentials does he have? He's not a doctor. He's gonna tell people how to eat? He's not a doctor. One, I don't know how everybody just automatically thinks that doctors are good at nutrition. You can be a doctor in literally anything, right? There are people that graduated from Berkeley College of Music that I went to that are doctors, okay? So let's just talk about that. But really, she would have these things happen. Where does he get off doing this? Where does your son get off doing this? They're not judging me. They're not judging Justin from Clovis. They're judging my poor mom. They're projecting into my mom. What did you do to raise a son who would make videos trying to help people when he's not a doctor, right? Judgment, 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 judgment. How many of you are afraid of judgment? I'm sure insecurity. Truth, people can be awesome. That's exactly what it is. It's judgment, right? You're all afraid of judgment of other people and your kids are paying the price. So let me walk you through something. I'm afraid my kid is gonna be different. I'm afraid my kid is gonna be alone. If you have an overweight kid, I'm gonna tell you something. You are so worried about the judgment that you'll receive as a parent that you're forgetting that your kid is already being judged every single day by his peers, by the ones that matter to him, by his peers. You're so worried about your peers that your kid's busy getting judged by his. He's getting laughed at, or she, they're getting laughed at, they're getting picked last, they're afraid to run around at recess. They're avoiding activities like swimming. They don't want to take their shirts off. That was my thing. Your kid's getting judged every day while you're arguing with the PTA over whether avocados are a health food. Think about this. Think. That's all you got to do is think. Think about it logically. What are you worried about? Whose needs are you putting first? You or the kid? It sucks. It sucks being a fat kid. It really sucks. That's me. It sucks. You don't think that when I was that age, I looked at that picture and understood that I had roles? Of course I did. You don't think I was getting my belly slapped, getting called dough boy by the older kids that I couldn't beat up yet? You bet your ass I can beat them up now because I have a complex. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I mean, I know it sounds funny, but it's exactly what, it's the truth. That's how I know. You're worried about this, your kid being different and alone. According to who? According to parents? How dare you give your kid an avocado? You're worried about judgment. You're worried about your kid being a lot of 31 year olds like me. I couldn't be happier that I'm different, right? You're not afraid of your kid being judged. You're afraid of you being judged. Let's be honest about that. It's very, very important. Let's check some comments here. How you guys feeling? Love you, 12-year-old Justin. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, there's a lot of moms in the academy that want to beat up all the people that picked on me. That's pretty awesome. You guys are the best. Thank you. <laughs> if you guys have any questions or anything, if I'm getting like too heavy, anything like that, let me know. Sorry, I get worked up with this stuff. Um, yeah, that's a big deal. Different. Okay, move on from that. <laughs> okay, um, so disbelief, different, alone, right? This is done. We went through this. Your kid's are already feeling different and alone if he's overweight. It is your job to help pull them out of that. It is your job to make this go away. Okay? That's your job. So let's go into number three. We dealt with number one. I will lose trust. No, you won't. You will gain trust by being honest. Honest and humble with your kids and teaching, treating them like adults. Number two, I don't want my kid to be different. I don't want my kid to be alone. We've already handled this. If you have an overweight kid, they already are. Stop being afraid of parents' judgment. Stop being afraid of doctors, teachers, parents, siblings, whatever, judging you. Stop. Put your kid first. Put your kid before your feelings. Number three. This is going to be too hard. Too hard. Right? That's what everybody says. So I have a ton of people in the academy who are six weeks in, eight weeks in. We've had incredible transformations. Like we've already shown you Micah, 52 pounds in eight weeks. Uh, we had Crystal, 22 pounds in that same eight weeks. We had Katie Thompson, who lost 22 pounds in six weeks. The Wizard, Josh, who lost 40 pounds in 60 days. 40 pounds in 60 days. All of you thought it was going to be hard at first. You thought it was going to be too hard. Now, the messages I get all the time, I am free. We talk about it in the academy. I am free. Right? People are saying, this could not be simpler. I had no idea how complicated my life was. I didn't know until I knew. Now I know. Life is simpler. Because what life used to be is, what's for dinner? Do I have enough ingredients to make Junior's favorite meal? Do I have to stop at the store? Is it a Subway night? Is it a pizza night? Is it a Taco Bell night? Is it a McDonald's night? Is it this, that, the other thing? Well, little Jimmy, he only eats mac and cheese. Little Susie, she only eats Hot Pockets. My stubborn husband only eats steak and mashed potatoes. And my trainer has me eating brown rice and lean chicken breasts. So now I get to make four meals. And this Justin guy is telling me that I should just pick a few foods. And somehow that's harder? That's harder. That's way harder, right? Way harder. No. The variety you have is killing you. The variety you have is killing you. It's killing your kids. You know you can do better, but what's the go-to? Well, like I said, little Jimmy likes mac and cheese. Little Susie likes Hot Pockets. Husband loves mashed potatoes. So you say, okay, instead of mashed potatoes, let's do sweet potatoes. Now, uh, we, we like doing fried chicken as a family. So let's fix this. Let's fix our standard American diet. The SAD diet, by the way. SAD diet. Standard American diet. Let's fix it. Instead of fried chicken and white flour and industrial seed oils, vegetable oil, canola oil, we're going to fry our chicken in almond flour and avocado oil. And instead of normal bread, we're going to make almond bread. And instead of normal pasta, we're going to have gluten-free pasta. And we're going to do this, that, the other thing. It's all more expensive. It's all more complicated. You have recipes and ingredients and all this. You're making it too hard. Simplify. Simplify. Do simple. I got in trouble for using profanity. So <laughs> do simple stuff. Okay? And go to do simple stuff.com. Right? Do simple stuff. Keep it simple stupid. I've always loved that term. Kiss. Keep it simple stupid. Right? So we have testimonies. Day one I thought this would be impossible. Now I can't picture going back to it. We had that one quote that was like, my refrigerator is so much simpler. I have so much less in my fridge, but I have so many more options. Right? And let me tell you what I mean by this. Let me walk you through a typical kid day. And I have talked to parents, like I said, talked to Josh about this. Josh talked to his friend about it. So what do you have? You have a little kid who wakes up. Tell me how complicated this sounds. Wakes up, cereal, probably skim milk, 1% milk. You might try to switch them to whole milk. Well, I'll just get them off skim milk. And Justin says fat's good, so I'll move them to whole milk, which literally has 12 grams of sugar a cup. Go look at your container of milk and look at how much sugar's in there. It's going to blow your mind, right? So you start them off with a big bowl of sugar with a big dousing serving of more sugar in liquid form. They eat all that sugar. Then they go to school and they're super hyper, super hyper for the first couple hours. And you tell them to sit down and be quiet, roll call. Yep, I'm here. A couple hours later, you got to stop for snack time. What's snack time? Goldfish, Fritos, little single serving bags of Doritos, right? 
sugar, 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 sugar. Let's spike their sugar back up and hope they'll pay attention, okay? So now you spike their sugar up so you don't have kids sleeping in class. A couple hours later, now it's lunchtime. What's for lunch? Sugar, 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 sugar. White bread, peanut butter and jelly, chicken tenders, maybe if you're lucky, they have pizza. These kids are drinking soda and Capri Sun and Lunchables at school. It's crazy. Apples, bananas, oranges, tangerine, sugar, 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 sugar. Okay, bowl of cereal, milk, snack time, sugar, carbohydrates, lunch time, sugar, carbohydrates, sugar, carbohydrates. Then you get outside, you go, go run it off, junior. Go burn off all that sugar. They go outside and run. Let me tell you something right now. These kids, the alone kids, they're not out running. They're finding a place to hide. Fat kids don't run in public. I did. And two full-grown adults stopped their car and yelled, run, fat boy, run at me. That's what happened to me. You think I ran again as a fat kid? I went out in recess and ran? Hell no. That didn't happen. No way, right? So these alone kids, these are the ones, they don't go burn off anything. Not to mention, it's been sugar, 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 sugar all day. You could have your kid go run a marathon and he's not going to burn off the sugar that he's eaten that entire day in half a day, in six hours, right? So they have lunch, go to recess. There's another snack time somehow in elementary schools. There's like another snack time. Here's another granola bar or Fritos or whatever else, right? Then they get home from school. What's the first thing they do? They run to the refrigerator, run to the cabinets, the cupboards for snack time. They need their after school snack. God forbid they go an hour without eating carbohydrates. So they get their after school snack, which is a granola bar or pizza. When I used to get home from school, I'd do pizza bagels. Me and my brother would do pizza bagels in the, in the toaster oven, right? Or I'd do pop tarts again after school. Like I want these cinnamon, brown cinnamon pop tarts after school, right? Awesome, great, more sugar, 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 sugar. A Couple hours later, it's dinner time. Now you know your kids are picky, so you only give your kids what they want. Chicken tenders or pizza or whatever, like I said, little Susie only eats Hot Pockets, Jimmy only eats mac and cheese, he's too picky. Well, it's better than nothing. Letting him eat his mac and cheese is better than nothing. No, it's not, let your kid fast. Way better than eating mac and cheese, I promise you. One of them can cause cancer, the other one can prevent it. Which one do you think is which? Think about it. Sugar, 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 sugar. All day long, screens, 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 laptops, phones, iPad, this, 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 suppressing melatonin levels, blue light all day long, sit down, shut up, fluorescent lights in school, sugar, 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 sugar. Guess what, kid? It's bedtime. If you come out of that room, you're grounded. Does this feel easy or complicated to you? It's sugar all day long. Why do you think kids are so much work? Think about it. You're setting yourself up for failure. And I can see this from the outside looking in because I'm not a parent. Because everybody likes to tell me, you don't know what it's like. Their behavior is up and down and up and down. And one day they're an angel and another day they're crazy. You're spiking their blood sugar all day long. You're giving them injections all day. Literally. They don't stand a chance with their behavior. They don't stand a chance. There's no chance of them staying focused. There's no chance of them being in a good mood all the time, right? So think about it, and here's how we know this, right? Think about your day as an adult. Wake up, grab a bagel, try to grab a shower, try to get the kids ready, have a mocha choco latte bullshit from Starbucks, right? Drink that stuff down, get to work, and then a couple hours later, you're crashing. You're getting that midday crash, five hour energy when that came out. Avoid the midday crash, five hour energy. That's their whole marketing thing. A midday crash is a well-known thing. Midday crash, you need to go get another cup of coffee. What do other moms and dads have? They, they get hangry, right? Boyfriends like to joke about their girlfriend getting hangry. Uh, wives like to talk about their man getting hangry. Hangry is a carbohydrate spike and crash. You have the crash, you get hangry. Right? So like I said before, if you're an overweight person, you're feeling alone and scared and all these things, your kid's feeling at two times 50, the same thing goes for these biochemical processes. When you're having a sugar spike and a sugar crash and you're feeling really crappy, you feel like you need a cup of coffee, you, need to, you, you just don't want to see anyone, what all these moms post on Instagram all the time, Instagram, don't talk to me before I've had my cup of coffee. Here's my meme, don't talk to me before I've had my cup of coffee. Cause you're grumpy cause you haven't had sugar. It's not a caffeine thing. It's cause your cup of coffee is a cup of candy and you're not willing to admit that. So this, this is what you have to understand is your kids are going through this. Your kids are like, why do I feel awesome? Oh my God, that granola bar was amazing. And then two seconds later, they're like, I hate you teacher. I'm not doing anything you say. This is crazy. I'm gonna sleep right now. <laughs> you take a nap on the desk, right? There, there, there's no chance. So you're making it harder for yourself. You have to understand that. 
So simplify. If you can simplify and you can fuel these kids in the right way with essential healthy fatty acids for sustained energy and no blood sugar spike, no blood sugar crash, no insulin spike from the pancreas. If you want to talk a little bit about science, let's not spike their insulin all day long. Let's keep them nice, even keeled. Believe it or not, I'd rather you give your kid bulletproof coffee for breakfast and give him Cheerios. That's right. Call the police. I just suggested you give your kid caffeine. If it's from whole ground coffee beans from a wonderful source, absolutely. Give them a little bit. Much better than Cheerios, I promise you. Let them take a bite of a stick of butter and send them to school. That's better than Cheerios. Give them sustained energy. It's like a log on a fire instead of kindling, right? So help, let's help prevent these spikes and crashes. And simplify in the house. So when I first went paleo, um, what I did was I tried to take all my foods and make them paleo. Like I said, I would fry chicken. When I, when I say these things like, oh, you're frying chicken and almond flour and avocado oil, I did it all. I did it all. Or even worse, I would do a 30-day paleo challenge, crush a 30-day paleo challenge, and then be like, I'm going to eat this entire cheesecake, and I'm going to drink some Jack and Coke, and it's going to be awesome. And then I would do it, and I would flip-flop back and forth, right? Like, I just didn't understand that this is like a way of lifestyle that, that I'm supposed to adopt and continue. Everybody always asks me about after 30 days, after 30 days. You want to go back to your old way of life after 30 days? If I cut 18 pounds off you in 30 days, you want to go back to your old way of life? You're a crazy person. Yeah, crazy person. <laughs> like, why would you do that, right? It doesn't make any sense. We can talk about introducing little things here and there. Yeah, sure. But it's, you have to think about it like stop trying to fix, right? Stop trying to fix the traditional American diet and just replace it. It's broken beyond repair. If your diet, your child's diet is broken beyond repair, don't try to fix them. Replace them. Replace the diet completely. Now, when I say to introduce something to your kids, what I'm saying is sit down and have a conversation with them. Again, not a dictatorship. People say my kids will resist. At first, yes, sure, they will resist. And they will ask you the why question. And you get to answer the why question. Treat them like an adult, have a conversation, and let them choose. Continue to let them choose what they want to eat, but give them very limited options. There's people always say this, I don't want to waste money. You say I need to clear out my house and clear out my cupboards, but like, shouldn't I just eat this food first? I mean, I already bought it. No, you shouldn't. Go give it to Goodwill. Put it in garbage bags and take it to Goodwill. Take it to a homeless shelter. Get it out of the house. Then there are no options. There was a girl in the academy that said this to me last week. Um, my, my daughter said, Mom, where's all the food? And she said, what are you talking about? There's plenty of food in the house. So that girl ate venison meat. They had venison meat in the freezer and she just ate deer meat. Because it's what was available. It's no longer this thing of you're holding a box of Hot Pockets and you're holding a chicken breast and you're going, uh-uh, not anymore. Let me throw this in the trash in front of you because I'm a devil person, right? No, that's not what you do. Just remove it from the house. That's it. Make it nice and easy. So, for example, give them a few choices, but treat them like an adult and let them choose. Options for breakfast. Let's say you have, hey, you can have eggs, you can have bacon, you can have avocados, you can have macadamia nuts, you can have pecans, you can have paleo powder, you can have a, a digest and rest paleo powder for breakfast before you go to school. You get to pick. Nowhere in there did I say Cheerios or Cinnamon Toast Crunch. It's just not in the house. If you don't want to eat, you can fast. That's not a bad thing. Fasting is one of the, it's literally like the only fountain of youth that we have in this world is resistance training and, and fasting. But that's a whole different story usually for grown-ups, right? Um, for dinner, beef, chicken, turkey, salmon, tuna, fish, whatever, and a couple green veggies. Which one do you want? Pick. You still get to pick, little dude. I'm not going to dictate this for you. You get to pick whichever one you want. And then you go, well, I, want, I want fish sticks. We don't have, we don't have fish sticks. They didn't, I'm sorry. They didn't, they didn't have them at the grocery store. I don't know. Say whatever you want, right? And use mental tricks. So you can gamify this stuff. Up until now, these kids have been man manipulated by marketing companies, by teachers, doctors who didn't know any better. They didn't know they were being manipulated, but they were being manipulated in a really unhealthy way, right? Eat this fruit. It's good for you. Eat this fruit. It's good for you, right? So let's manipulate them in healthy ways. Gamify things. If you gamify things, you're going to get a better response than you would get from the dictator approach. So here's what I mean by that. Breakfast for dinner. If your kids are like four or five years old and you tell them that they're going to have breakfast for dinner, they're like, what? What is this craziness? I'm in the twilight zone. This is awesome. Yep. You get eggs and we're going to make bacon and you're going to have breakfast for dinner. Because it's just food. Eat food any time of day. Breakfast for dinner is a great way to do it. You can do this trick. I've done this with my nephew before. So I'll bet you two bucks I can eat more than you. 
especially little boys, little competitive boys. Like he's five years old now, he's playing little league, and you try to tell him, I'll bet you five bucks, I'll bet you two bucks, I'll bet you one buck, whatever it is. I bet you a buck I can eat more than you. And you have a plate full of nothing but turkey and, and green beans. I bet you I can eat more than you. <gasps> His eyes gonna light up, okay, let's do it, boom. Right, and then he realizes, he doesn't even realize that he's eating something that's delicious. He's just wanting to win this bet, right? Another great thing that people do is taco night. I love, love, love the idea of taco night. So all you do is you throw a big taco night, you lay everything out like it's a buffet with spoons, you can put your this and that and the other thing in, and then mom or dad, parent, magically forgets tortillas, they forget the hard shell taco shells, they forget all of it. They don't go get Siete coconut tortillas, which are great by the way, but you don't get those and instill the habit of you're still eating a taco because your little kid doesn't know the difference between that wrap and a non-coconut flour wrap, right? So that's the thing. Don't just instill these same habits over and over and over by trying to replace them and make them paleo. Do a taco night and have fun with it. Mess, get messy with the food. Have a little food fight if you want to, right? But it's all 100% paleo options. You can do a taco night like that. It's very, very simple. So little things like that, gamify it. That's all you have to do. You can change your habits. Oh, wow, okay. So uh, you can change these habits little, little, little by little, okay? So if, you, if your kids are old enough to understand, I also highly recommend you check out the documentary Fed Up on Netflix. Um, I heard that this is gonna be there for a limited time. So watch Fed Up on Netflix. It's uh, pretty, pretty awesome. Um, all right, so we're already 90 minutes into this thing. Really? That's crazy. Okay, I was gonna tell you uh, one little story I'll tell you about the wizard, Josh and his transformation. He's got this thing with his kid, Liam, and he used Zevia because, yeah, there's, there's Liam drinking Zevia. He used Zevia to change Liam's habits. The way he did that was, you get to have a snack now. Liam wanted a carbohydrate, sugar-filled snack. He said, no, you can have this turkey. We have turkey, you can eat turkey. Now I eat this turkey and you can have Zevia with it. So he drinks Dr. Pepper Zevia, which is totally allowed, and it tastes just like Zevia. That's him laughing and saying it tastes like Dr. Pepper. So now he knows there's a mental trigger. Then anytime he wants a Zevia, he's gonna eat turkey too. So now he eats turkey and Zevia. And Josh asks him what he wants for dinner at night. What do you want for dinner? You can have this, 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 this. And Liam says, eggs, I want eggs. And Josh makes a big deal out of it. This is awesome, you want eggs? Yeah, we're gonna cook eggs for dinner, right? He can eat eggs every single meal, literally. I've been eating eggs every single day for over five years. My health is pretty good, I promise you. They don't need all this crazy variety. If you take them out to McDonald's, you know what Liam's gonna get. Every parent knows that. Well, this kid gets chicken nuggets. This kid gets a Big Mac. This kid, they want the same stuff over and over and over and over and over and over. You always tell me how picky your kids are. They only see, eat these certain foods. You only have to replace four or five foods. After a few weeks, they don't even know. Their little brains don't even know. They're just like, yeah, I eat eggs now. There's no, never any sugar in the house. Okay, cool. All right, anyway. So, we banged all these out. <laughs> we banged out, I will lose trust, I don't want my kid to be different, and this is going to be too hard. So we handle the too hard thing. It's actually much, much easier, especially once you get into it. It's much, much easier. Okay, so let's check comments. Do we still have people in this group? Yeah, we still got people watching. Wow, sorry about that. I did not know that we were over 90 minutes. This is totally, totally crazy. Okay, um, we're over 90 minutes, let's look at some my toddler wants to eat eggs and bacon every single day. Yes, awesome, that's awesome. That's what I'm saying, they will love this stuff. Thank you for my hair comment, that's awesome. That, don't trick them into making the same bad choices with substitutes, exactly, that's fantastic. I wanna come over for taco night, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I totally had breakfast for dinner tonight. I thought bacon kept you awake at night. No, not somebody made that up. Um, my kid's favorite breakfast is dinner. Yeah, awesome, make it a game. This is a, thank you guys for watching for 90 minutes. I'm really sorry. Okay, let's get into some other stuff here because I went way over and I've stolen a bunch of your time and I got super animated and super upset and all of the things. So here's what I'm gonna do. I need to talk to you about something. I created something that does not exist. I have created a program for Clovis kids. I wanna get your kids involved in Clovis. I wanna get your kids over into a healthier lifestyle that they can carry with them forever so that they, they don't have these same pain points and all these things that I deal with and body dysmorphia at 31. Let's try to fix that now, okay? So this is Clovis Kids. So let me erase this for you and talk to you about this. So this has taken me years and years and years and years in the making to figure out how to do this. Deep, deep dive on research trying to figure out if there are any things that we can do for obese kids and the information is just not there. It is simply not 
there. It's crazy. Um, okay, so here we go. So here's what we're gonna do. I wanna help your kid be healthier. So we always talk about an offer. I'm gonna give you a big surprise offer tonight that's gonna be incredible. We're just gonna do it tonight. And first of all, I'm gonna walk you through a couple things. Perfect Paleo Powder is 100% acceptable for your children, right? I highly recommend it. Jackie's little twin babies, they drink Digest and Rest every day. They freak out if they don't get it, they go running for the bottle. They drink the chocolate Digest and Rest, right? The cacao flavor. So what I wanna do is make Paleo Powder accessible as you start this journey with your kids. So one, we're having a contest. So understand we're having a contest for all the families that adopt the Clovis lifestyle. So get in the Clovis Academy and I want you and your family to document. Take videos of your new meals. Take videos of you eating together. Take videos of you playing outside together. Take videos of your kid doing an electrolyte salt shot. Take videos of your kid drinking your paleo powder digest and rest, right? At the end of the month, we're gonna give away prizes to all the families who have been part of this transformation because I care about your family so much and I want, this to, I want these changes to happen that I'm just gonna give you prizes at the end. And we're gonna pick one family for an amazing prize that I'm not even gonna tell you about. So all you gotta do is participate. So there's gonna be a lot of prizes and one big giant grand prize that we're gonna talk about, which is gonna be crazy. Okay, so tonight, um, a lot, there was a, we did a fat loss special last week. Um, so people got their hands on a lot of bags of fat loss. We're gonna use that same tech. Thank you guys so much for being awesome with the tech and being patient with us. And Josh and Anna, the Clovis team, who took care of you guys in an amazing way. I love them, they're amazing. I'd be totally screwed without them. Um, so we're gonna do this again tonight. We have a special for you tonight. So I'm gonna walk you through this. So we have the fat loss formula. This is for the grown-ups because it does have caffeine in it from coffee beans. Fat loss is $79.99. Then we have digest and rest. It's a lot like fat loss does not have caffeine, perfectly acceptable for little kids, older kids, adolescents, teens, whatever, children of any age. This is $59.99. So we have both of those for sale tonight, but I wanna walk you through a couple things. So I have invented this protocol that will give you a few things. Access to a new website, access to Clovis Kids, Dot com. So we now have ClovisKids.com. This is a membership only site. You're going to get access to ClovisKids.com. Now, when you have access to ClovisKids.com, that comes with a few things. It's going to give you access to the website. You're going to get access to the thing that I have invented that I haven't told you about yet. This is the only macronutrient calculator for kids that exists in the world today. I took a tremendous amount of time and scoured clinical studies to come up with the best way to do this. So I will run macronutrients for all of your kids, all the kids in your family, right? Now to be clear, the macronutrients are for you. They're not for your kid. Macronutrients, calories, all that, that's for you. You just get to go through and I will help you create meal plans for your kids to match their macronutrients so you can feed them without teaching them to track numbers. Teaching them to track numbers is a quick way to an eating disorder. We're not doing that but I will let you understand what your kid needs to be eating. Because I will tell you, in all the time I've done this in the last six years, I have never met a kid who eats enough. Never. I've never met a kid who meets their caloric need ever. So your kid is under eating. Even if they're overweight, they're under eating. I'm telling you, because calories don't work the way you think they do. So I'm gonna give you access to ClovisKids.com. I'm gonna give you custom macros for all of the kids in your family, all kids, so you can have an understanding of what their body needs and what you need to give them as a parent as you're eating together and you're documenting and doing all these things for the contest because you want to win a grand prize. So you get custom macronutrients for all your kids. You get an approved foods list for your kids. So you get the kids approved foods list and you get exclusive video content. Now again, this is a members only website that you're gonna have a special login for. So you're gonna get a special login to ClovisKids.com. That's where you get the exclusive video content. That's where you'll get the macronutrient calculator. That's where you'll get access to me to help you meal plan, to help meet your kids' macronutrient ranges, to help you do this, to help change your kids' life for the better, to help you clean out your cupboards, give you the approved foods list, and we're gonna literally change your whole household, change your whole family, okay? That's what I wanna do tonight. Now again, $79.99 for fat loss, 
Digest and Rest is $59.99. What's that, 140 bucks? So if you were to buy these two bags, fat loss for yourself, digest and rest for your kid, you're gonna get that for 140 bucks. Tonight, what I'm gonna do for you is I'm gonna offer this. If you use, what's our hashtag? Okay, so all you have to do is this. In the comment section, some of you know this, you've been down this road. In the comment section, buy Clovis Kids. Buy Clovis Kids. This is the Clovis Kids program. All you have to do is hashtag buy Clovis Kids. Now these two bags alone with none of this are $140. What I'm gonna do tonight is I'm gonna give you all of this for, a, it's a special, it's a special offer for you. Let's see. You're peeking, you're peeking. Okay. I'm gonna give you all of this. You get these two bags, $140 value, access to cloviskids.com, custom macronutrients for all your kids, approved foods list for your kids, exclusive video content. All you have to do is hashtag buy Clovis Kids, and I'm gonna give you all this for $97. That's it. Exclusive membership, $97. You'll get a bag of fat loss for you, you get a bag of digest and rest for your kids, and you get access to all this. I'm gonna run custom macronutrients for all your kids through foods list, exclusive video content. You have a new forum where you can communicate with other moms and dads, parents, all this. So $97, that's it, 97, boom. If you go on my website right now and try to buy these two bags, you're looking at $140. I'm gonna give you all of this for $97. And all you have to do is type this hashtag in your comment section. Hashtag buy Clovis kids. That's it. Whole new program. This is what allows me to change the world. Okay, I need you to understand this. You guys know that I've been doing Clovis Academy forever. I try, to, I try to respond to all your comments. I get a ton of Facebook messages. I get 60 plus emails a day. I've run 250 plus custom macronutrient plans in just the last 60 days alone. I love it. I love that you guys are losing weight. I love that your clothes are fitting different. I love that you have to go to the store and go shopping for new clothes, but this is my whole heart. This is how we change the future. This is how Clovis literally changes the future of the country. Through your kids. You're the gatekeeper to your kids. You're allowing me into your living room right now. You're allowing me on your computer screen to try to help your kids. So your kids don't feel alone and all these things we've already talked about. So all you have to do tonight, hashtag buy Clovis kids, $97 will be a one-time charge. We'll take care of everything on our end. We'll give you access to the exclusive cloviskids.com where we're basically building our own Clovis Academy that's just for kids, parents, to take care of your kids, change your whole household. How are we looking on time, Josh? Uh, we are at uh, uh, 100 minutes. All right, let's probably wrap up. Okay, let's see, how are we looking over here? Great, awesome. This is so cool, yeah, so anybody who's, who is, is purchasing right now, that's awesome. If you guys have any questions, let me know. So, all right, here's what I'll do. Look, we've been at this for 100 minutes. I don't wanna just wrap up on you without taking any questions. So, if you have questions about this, go ahead and shoot them right now. Just start asking me, comment on the Facebook feed. Um, I think, is there more than one feed where all the comments go on this feed? Yeah, they're all gonna be on Clovis Culture. All right, they're gonna be on the Clovis Culture. Okay, so if you guys have questions or anything about this, about this Buy Clovis Kids, if you guys have any questions, $97 Buy Clovis Kids, leave me some comments right now. I'll turn this so I can read them. As a former fat kid, you are the best. Yes, former fat kids, unite. Such a wonderful opportunity. Thank you, Cindy. Kelsey, I cannot wait, love this. This is so cool. Yeah, uh, Desiree, thank you for answering. Anna, I'll run macros for all your kids with one membership. You got four kids, I'll do them all, no big deal. I will run macros for every single one of them. Um, do I have to do it for each kid? Nope, can I still get the access? Amanda, what do you mean, can I still get the access? I want toddler shirts more than you even know. Okay, we can talk about some toddler shirts. That'd be really cool. Um, so again, this is going to be a, like an all-in-one approach. Everything that you've seen me do in the academy, 
I'm going to do for these kids, okay? I'm gonna do it for all of your kids, all the kids in your family, we're gonna custom macros, we're gonna run through an approved foods list. Um, approved foods list is gonna be a little bit different, which parents are probably gonna be upset about, but how come I don't get to eat that, right? Um, we'll make that a little bit different. Um, exclusive video content, that's gonna be really cool. You guys can share videos with your, your kids, pictures, videos like the videos we have, the salt shots, trying digest and rest, all these things. Are we able to get access without purchasing PPP? It's not in the budget right now. Um, okay, we're, there is gonna be access to ClovisKids.com, but it's gonna be more expensive than this. Um, so this price is definitely going to go up. So if you think about it right now, the price just for Clovis Kids alone is actually gonna be above this price that comes with the fat loss and digest and rest. So just keep that in mind, the price is definitely gonna go up. I think you should talk about kids a little bit more. All kids? The kids macros. Like yeah, yeah. Talk a little bit more about that, expand on how important that is. Okay, so kids macros, this is pretty interesting. There are countless equations and countless calculations that are done to determine macronutrients for adults. Like I said, this obesity and overweight epidemic with kids is so rare, this has only existed for the last 30 to 40 years, that there's very limited clinical data about the amount of calories that kids need. So I did a deep dive, curated all of the best clinical studies, found out the best way to do this, and literally programmed an algorithm myself, built an algorithm to get your kids custom macronutrients. Now, you know that Bryce lost 15 pounds in 10 days. Trust me, I know what I'm doing here. If you have an overweight kid, this is the single best thing you can do for them. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah, Kathy, if you commented with a hashtag, yeah, it went through. I'm sure it went through. Yeah. Yeah, explain to them about what we, what Swell, about that payment. Yeah, yeah, okay. So what's happened with Swell, um, and this is if they already did the link, right? Yeah. Or do they have to do it again? Last week, just let them yep. know, you know, or do you want me to explain? Yeah, wait, come over here. He's going to, he's, <laughs> guys, this is the wizard. 40 pounds in 60 days, father of two. Okay. Um, so if you did a comment last week, right? If you did your hashtag and you did buy fat loss, when you signed up and you did that whole process, the reason why this is so cool, the reason why we did this in the first place, is now all you have to do is put in the hashtag and keyword, the keyword that we gave you tonight, and it will charge your card automatically. So there's gonna be a Facebook message, a follow-up, just like we did last week. We'll get flavors, we'll do all that stuff, we'll make sure all the details are correct, we'll just follow up and get everything for you. But that's the, that's the beauty behind this. It's just super easy, super quick. You do the hashtag and it charges your card automatically. If there's anything details, anything uh, card failure or anything like that, we'll message you and we'll get everything taken care of. Nobody will lose the deal, okay? That's the wizard. That's why he's the wizard because I don't know how any of that stuff works. It's amazing though. I know that I get to give you all of this for $97 and I'm super pumped about it. And I know that I'm gonna get to engage with your kids. I'm gonna make videos for your kids. When your kids do something cool, let your kids know as well. As you guys are in, in here on ClovisKids.com and you start sharing videos and sharing pictures and stuff, understand you're gonna have other little kids, other little moms might videotape their kid. You know, Liam might make a video for your kid saying you gotta try this Zevia Dr. Pepper, right? And we can talk about kids changing each other's lives and a support system for these kids. You have the academy with over 500 members. This is a 500 member support system that you have. Let's give this to our kids, right? There's an obesity epidemic among adults and there's support systems everywhere. There's a $24 billion supplement industry trying to take your money every second. What are we doing for kids? Let's give kids that same support system. I want Liam to say, what's up, Doug? I heard you like Zevia Dr. Pepper too. Awesome, it's my favorite drink, this is so cool. And then like each other's pictures, right? Let's use social media for good. Let's use the social media platforms that get so much bad press these days, right? Let's use social media for good. Let's make some change. All you have to do is write, buy Clovis Kids. Hashtag buy Clovis Kids. That's it, it's nice and easy. Tag a friend, if you want a friend to get this deal, tag them in the comments right now, bring them here, let them know that they get all of this. This is two bags for 140. If you have fat loss and digest and rest right now and you like it, you think you're gonna reorder in the future? Are you kidding me? That's $140 to get those two bags. Send your kid to school on digest and rest, watch how his day changes. Send your kid with a shaker bottle to school with lunch and avocado, macadamia nuts, and a serving of digest and rest. Watch how their day changes. Give them digest and rest hot cocoa every night. Heat it up for them. Hot cocoa every night. They're gonna think it's candy. Literally, it literally tastes amazing. It's like the best hot chocolate I've ever had. I do it myself. It's delicious, right? 
Help your daughter's tummy. Yeah, Desiree, absolutely. When you come into Clovis Kids, we can talk about all the same things. Listen, your kids are humans. Your kids are not kids. Don't think of them as children. They're tiny little humans. If I can rebuild someone's gut microbiome and cure things, I literally reverse things like ulcers. I've reversed type two diabetes. Yes, literally, I get in a lot of trouble for saying that, but I've helped people get off insulin completely. I don't care what doctor tells me I can't say that. They can go to hell, right? If I can fix your digestion issues, I can fix your gut microbiome, I can do the same thing for your little kid. 100%, why? Because it's a human gut. It's not a little children gut that needs different probiotics, right? It's no, it's literally, I can fix all these same issues. So anything that I've helped you fix in the Clovis Academy, if you're losing weight, I can help your kid lose weight if they're overweight. If your kid is little, I can help your kid gain muscle, right? Gain muscle. If you're like, man, my kid is teeny tiny. He's in the bottom 5% at his age. I don't know what to do. I just can't get him to grow. He's malnourished. Let me help you work through this. Let me help your kid get bigger. Right? You, you want to you wanna raise a little football player? You want to raise a Tom Brady? Let me show you how to do that. Okay? I mean, so that's it. That's all you got to do. Hashtag buy Clovis Kids, $97. You get all this. You get access to ClovisKids.com. I don't know how long this 97 is going to be good for. I know that we're going to run this out indefinitely. I'm not, not the deal. We're not going to run the deal indefinitely, but we're going to run ClovisKids.com because I've never been more excited about something. I'm actually going to push this way pretty hard. And uh, so in the future, the membership for just ClovisKids.com without the bags of fat loss and digest, that price is definitely going to go up. It just has to. Um, you guys know the Clovis Academy has 500 members right now. There's no way for me to keep up with all the comments, all the messages, all the emails. I am but one man. I'm trying my best. And I really, really want to be able to focus here. This allows me to focus. So I really want to focus here and make as much change as I can. Okay? So... That's all you gotta do. Hashtag buy Clovis. Thank you guys for being with me for literally two hours. This is crazy. Um, so does anybody have any questions? Wizard, start to, yeah, we'll talk about the contest in the Clovis Academy, Kathy, don't worry about it. Um, what else we got? Questions, questions, questions. Can you tell Lynette Hannah to look at her Facebook messenger? <laughs> okay, Lynette, um, look at your Facebook messenger. So if you haven't, if you haven't hashtagged before and you have hashtag now, then you're going to get a message. So it's going to go through your Facebook Messenger. You're very welcome, Kelsey. Thank you. Yeah, this, yeah, Desiree, this is this is a one time. This gets you in. This this is as I'm saying right now. This right here, this is your access, and this is the only time that it's going to cost this. So that's your access to Clovis Kids. Like you do this. Hashtag buy Clovis Kids, you're done. That's it. Oh. You're done. I'm yep. going to address Abby's comment. Yeah. Talking about split households. Yep. That's tough. Yeah. That's really tough. Okay, Abby, that's super tricky. Um, here's what you do your daughter's nine years old, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So my fear is starting this, and since we have a split household, which is very common these days, since we have a split household, the weekends at dad's are going to ruin all of our progress. Six and nine years old here. I don't see him getting on board. There's a reason he's next. Okay, think about this. Yeah, Desiree, that's actually a good thing. At least you still have five of seven days, right? You still have five of seven days. Don't worry about the X. Treat your kids like grown-ups. Sit your kids down, right? Explain to your kids that some foods are poison and some foods are not. Now I understand when they're with dad, they might only have poisonous options and that's really, really tough, I'm sorry. But we're gonna treat this like we would treat birthdays. Like I said, if you had 50 birthdays a year and your kid ate 50 slices of birthday cake over the year, they still have 315 days of doing it perfectly. So this is all the more reason for you to literally rid your entire house of any sugary poison. Remove it from the house, sit the girls down, tell them that you want this to be a real change. You can show them this video. I can make a video for them once we get into the Clovis Kids. We can talk about all the benefits of this, talk about how great they're gonna feel. All you need to do is educate them, and then you have nine-year-old to help six-year-old when they're at dad's. And nine-year-old and six-year-old can tell dad, hey, mom makes us this chicken, and we want this. That's what we want, right? So, I mean, you get to be the good guy here. You get to teach them to ask for what they want. Maybe they can have a conversation with dad that you can't have with dad because of the ex situation. Treat them like tiny little humans who are brilliant, right? That's it. Yeah, Anna, use your voice. 
Teach them to use their voice, okay? They have the, they have the right to ask for whatever food they want to ask for. And your ex needs to, to be cool with that. And if he's not, that's a real problem. And you can address that down the line. But uh, yeah, it's a big deal. Some is better than none. Yes, Jackie. Dad's house, when the kids go to dad's house. Yep, Brett. Okay, Brett asked the same question. Yeah, that's it. So uh, Brett, same rundown. I don't know exactly how, kid, how old your kids are. Um, yeah, you need to treat them like little people. Teach them how to use their voice. Teach them how to ask for what they want. Teach them what's poison and what's not poison. Teach them what real food is and not real food, right? Teach them. Sit down, let them know. Don't just switch things up on them in your household and then send them to dad's house or mom's house or whatever with no tools. No tools in their tool bag on how to deal with this. Just, oh, okay, I guess when you're there, you eat whatever you get. No, 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 no. Have the conversation. And have the conversation with the ex. You know, it's an uncomfortable conversation, I'm sure. Niece and nephew. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Brett, Brett and Abby, okay, you guys are all connected. Got it, got it. Yeah, awesome. Well, I mean, that's, that's pretty much the only advice I can give you there. It's, it's really, really tricky. I know that that's a tricky spot to be in. But again, you have them for five or seven days. It will slow down progress. I'm not going to lie to you. If they get hit with a bunch of sugar every weekend, it's definitely going to slow down progress. So that's something that you want to try to handle. Um, have the conversation with the ex. Try to have the kids have the conversation with the ex. That's really all I can say right now. Uh, max age for kids would be considered, well, so the macronutrients for kids is up to 17. The macronutrients are run differently all the way up to age 18, but from age 14 on, I give them the same macronutrient split. But the way that I calculate those macronutrients are different. So there's uh, ages three to five, there's ages six to 14, there's ages 14 to 17. Now again, I built all this. This is my algorithm. This is my algorithm. These are my macronutrients that I made up. Like I created these things out of my personal research. And I promise you, it's the best program that has ex ever existed for kids ever, 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 okay? So understand how powerful this is gonna be. Now, so age 14 to 17, their macronutrient split will be the same as yours, but their macronutrients and their caloric need and all those things are calculated in a much different way. So from three to five, way different than from six to 14, four, six to 14, way different than 14 to 17, but 14 to 40, not so different in macronutrient ratios. This, I hate to say it this way, but this is kind of for me to know. There's, there's no way for me to explain this to you. It's just a mountain of research. It's a mountain of research. That's why I turned it into an algorithm. Um, so my 19 year old will be my food list. Yes, 100%, your 19 year old would be. My ex is jumping on because Bryce is doing awesome. Exactly, we talked about this. Always approach this from a place of love, even if it's with an ex, right? Even if it's with an ex. I love that. That story is fantastic. All you have to do is live by example. Don't push on people. Live by example. The next thing you know, you might, Abby, you might have your nine-year-old and six-year-old change your ex's diet. Could happen, right? I don't know what kind of daddy is. I can't comment on that. I'm not going to get into the personal stuff. But really, I mean, you might, you, might, you might end up changing his life through your kids. Your kids can change the world. That's the whole point of this. They can change their friends' lives. They can, you can have their other kids running home to their mom going, you know, Junior gave me avocado and it was delicious. How come you don't give me avocado? How come you only give me Doritos, right? So you never know. All right, what else we got? Yes, ripple effect, Sean, ripple effect. Incredible, incredible, incredible. Yeah, that's gonna make Bryce feel really good. That's pretty awesome. I know that me going through all these nutrition things and all these memories and stuff I have with my dad through biohacking and weightlifting and nutrition and all these things and Sunday dinner and making paleo dinners and keto stuff that we make, whatever. It's just incredible memories. It's awesome. Um, so does anybody have any questions? Any more questions about this? The hashtag by Clovis Kids? Let me know. Go ahead, hit me. Any questions you got? Um, I'm pretty excited about this. I cannot wait to get started with Clovis Kids. I can't, start, I can't wait to start making video content. It's gonna be really cool. Those, all the videos that are in the Clovis Academy, little kids are like my favorite thing ever, ever, ever. Okay, so uh, yeah, we're, we're probably, what, two hours now? Yeah, we're over two hours. Okay, so I hope that we, we did well for you guys. We went through those three beliefs that um, I will lose trust with my kids, I don't want my kid to be different, and this is too hard. So let's just touch back on that, those three things. I hope that we squash those fears for you. If you have any other fears as to why you wouldn't start your kid on this program, or why you wouldn't start yourself on the program, or join in the Clovis Academy, or anything like that, just let me know. Uh, and as always, I am personally available. Might take me a couple days, but I am personally available at justin at clovisculture.com. I will do my very best. Email me, justin at clovisculture.com, 
We're on Facebook, obviously you're watching us here, slash The Clovis Culture. We're over at Instagram, at The Clovis Culture. Um, you can find me, just Justin Nault on Facebook. Join the Clovis Academy, email me. Hope I squashed all these fears for you. If I didn't, I'm happy to go into further detail. Um, as always, give me new ideas and new topics for AMA next week. We do these every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Central. Ask me anything number 14. This is gonna go up on the blog, so there will be a blog post of this. These. Oh, and a podcast, yes. So the perfect podcast with Justin Nault. That's on Google Store, it's on iTunes, it's on Spotify, basically everywhere you can find podcasts. You can search Justin Nault, you can find the perfect podcast. All these AMAs and some additional episodes, we're gonna start doing interviews, we're gonna start doing rants, daily rants of me just driving in my car going, this is crazy, right? Me just being totally animated and ridiculous as I think of things while I'm driving, okay? Uh, we have a lot, a lot of ideas for that podcast. We're gonna launch a lot of content in there. So subscribe, subscribe on iTunes, subscribe in the Google Store, check us out on Spotify, follow us on the Spotify as a playlist or whatever you need to do. Just check out the perfect podcast with Justin Nault, that is me. Thank you guys for listening for me, to me here. Thank you for listening to me there. Thank you for being in the Clovis Academy. Thank you for all the invites today. We went over 500 members in the Clovis Academy, which is fantastic. I love the Academy, love it. It's the only reason really that I'm on Facebook is Clovis now, it's fantastic. So again, hashtag buy Clovis kids. I don't know how long we're gonna bring this up. We're gonna leave this up for. So let your friends and family know, tag them in the comments. Tag as many people as you can with kids that you think would benefit from this and just tell them about this hashtag buy Clovis kids. This is deal here. Show them this, screenshot it, whatever you gotta do, everything they're gonna get. This is literally, we're building a new life for your kids and you get a bag of fat loss while you're at it. Even if you just want the fat loss and digest and rest for yourself, that's normally 140, $97 tonight. So that's all you gotta do is hashtag buy Clovis kids. Thank you, Lynette. Thank you, Cambria, you're awesome. Thank you, Desiree. Thank you, Kelsey. Clovis.kids.com, yes. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys. Two whole hours. Thank you for everybody who, who stuck with us on this. Again, my name is Justin. I own Clovis. I will continue to work with you guys as much as I can. I will comment. I will like. I will share. I will answer all the messages, all the direct messages, all the emails, everything. I'm doing my very, very best. And I want to put as much effort as I possibly can right here for you guys. Okay? So try to help me spread this word. Thank you for hanging out with me for two hours. I'm probably gonna shut this down because I can feel my voice starting to go now. And I gotta sing this weekend, as you guys know. So uh, thank you guys so much. Yes, thank you, Wizard. Thank you, Anna. You guys are awesome. And all right, until next week, this has been Ask Me Anything, Facebook Live number 14. How to set your kids free in 30 days. Thank you for spending two hours with me. I love you guys. All right, see you next week. off.